Good morning, everybody. It's Annalise Garrison again. I just got done tutoring, and somebody needed help with remembering what diseases were airborne and what diseases were droplet. So that's why I'm making this uh, particular video because there are a lot of acronyms out there um, on the internet. You know, Spider Man, my chicken, my chicken ran into Spider Man who jumped on the Batman. I mean, really okay and then there's other um, videos right here on YouTube that only went had you do like remember three or four and there's actually more than three or four so you can't do just MTV alright there's more so I'm going to do uh, I'm gonna do a quick presentation this will not take long you know I just wanted to share something with you I never could get the acronyms so I decided to use pictures who can't memorize with with picture with pictures everybody can do that right so um, for the airborne diseases things that you say up oh, uh, this is an airborne disease I want you to remember three pictures a VHS player a picture of a thunderstorm in your head and a picture of a camera so you have those three pictures in your head, right? VHS player, thunderstorm, and camera. For the VHS player, I want you to think of varicella, herpes zoister, and shingles. For the thunderstorm picture, right? The picture in your head, I want you to think TB and SARS. For the camera picture, I want you to focus on cam. Cam, right? Camera. Cam. Remember chicken pox, avian flu, and measles. Now, if the NCLEX says, specifically says rubella when it comes to measles, then that would be droplet. If it says rubiola, then that would be airborne. If it specifically says that, but for the NCLEX, if it just says measles, then please automatically think airborne precaution. Let's look at some more pictures for the uh, for the droplet. Like I said, there's more than four. In this particular case, there's 14. But we're going to remember all 14 because we're going to remember pictures. So look at the picture of the elderly couple in the corner, right? Okay, I want you to remember Department on Aging and Rehabilitative Services, DARES. That's a very, very common acronym in the healthcare field. So when you think of DARES for droplet diseases, for droplet precautions, I want you to think diphtheria, adenovirus, RSV, and sepsis. When, now, I also had PE. Remember, look at the picture. Pulmonary embolism, right? When you, re when you think of the pulmonary embolism picture for droplet precautions, I want you to remember pharyngitis and epiglottitis. Simple as that. Let's not make it any harder. But there definitely is more than just four or five. All right, let's continue with some more pictures covering the droplet diseases. Continuing, look at Charlie Brown. Remember the acronym MISS, right? He sat there, he, remember, get this picture in your head. Ah, I missed the baseball, right? So, when you think of the acronym MISS, I want you to think about meningitis, influenza, scarlet fever, and streptococcal bacteria. Any kind of streptococcal bacteria, any kind of disease. Glomerulonephritis, strep throat, whatever it might be, right? So, the streptococcal bacteria is a droplet precaution. I want you to remember mumps. I could not come up with an acronym. I was stuck with one less, uh, one extra M. So just remember the picture of the see this picture of the gentleman. Mumps is not for kids anymore. Elder, uh, older people can get them too. So remember mumps. Have that picture in your head. And then, last but not least. The last picture I want you to put in your head is Cookie Monster and the letter P. And there are three P's left. 
And when you think of the letter P, when you think of Cookie Monster and the letter P, I want you to remember that pneumonia, par parvovirus, and pertussis are also droplet. So believe it or not, there are 14 diseases that are droplet that you, we just went through with a couple of pictures that you can put in your head. Now I would invite each one of you that need help with your NCLEX and need some tutoring, please contact me on my website. I'd be more than happy to call, uh, to, for you to call me or to text me or to email me. Just go to my website at the bottom of the screen, caringforyou.net. Click on the Contact Us page. You can call me, you can text me, or you can email me. I'd be more than happy to help you. And that's the end of this presentation, so have a good one.